Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the gold spot price in the Great British Pound. Unfortunately, the chart only goes back to 2009. I have some other charts, but I can't do the comparisons and the indicators. So we'll just have to go with this one. But you can see here that we're at a pretty important point here with gold in the British pound. It's back up to the main area of congestion, which really uh, was active for almost a two year period. You can see the high that gold made. And we know the famous top uh, in gold was made in September of 2011, whereas silver topped in May of the same year. Uh, the other thing is this downtrend line that we have in place was clearly broken. Uh, there's multiple touch points. There's the origin high and there's touch point, touch point. And ones that I really like here is seeing the breakout point uh, where we correct back to the same trend line and then we take off. So the great British pound gold price is within striking distance of new highs that may even coincide with the upcoming election here, which is roughly, what, two weeks out now? And we're going to be talking about the election and potential fake election here in a minute. But so you can see here that all of the lies that the powers that be have told about how gold is not a way to protect your assets, uh, they just simply aren't true. Uh, the ones they're the least true in is the major manipulators. And of course, the British are some of the biggest manipulators. I'm going to put the power structure of uh, my view of the powers that be being the Vatican on top, the Bank of England below them, and then the United States being the economic and war puppet of those two. But the British Empire now is in, in dire straits. And we can see this reflected in the price of gold. Now, another chart I wanted to pull up here real quick is the US dollar index, which has been on a tear recently. And you can see it seems to be forming up a sort of pennant formation as well with a very healthy MACD that is about ready to cross over through the zero line to the positive. So a uh, pretty big formation coming up here in the dollar. But I wanted to cross this over with the US uh, major index, which is the Dow 30, as Andy Hoffman calls it, the Dow propaganda index, and show you how important the leverage in this is. Because this leverage that we're talking about here will potentially go the other way when things go the other way. And you can see uh, that they track each other fairly decently, not really good. But uh, the main thing I want you to notice here is this trend right here, where we have equities in the US moving up. Let's see if we can get a monthly on here. Not a lot better, but you can see the major trend here we have is equities in the US moving up to all time highs and the dollar moving up in a pretty serious bull market from pretty much the beginning of the financial crisis. So we have a stronger dollar and we have a stronger stock market. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you invest in stocks, if you're a foreign investor, say you are an investor in US stocks from another country and depending on your currency's differential with the dollar, uh, your stock market gains might be mitigated by the loss in the currency that you own. In this case, we have the currency rising with the stocks rising. So that's a double win. That is a incredibly bullish scenario you don't see very often. We also saw the same thing in the Clinton boom. We had the strong dollar moving up with the strong stock market moving up and then both kind of topped around, this, uh, around the same time. The dot-com crash happened first, and then the dollar began to collapse as interest rates began to fall. Now, we're in a totally different situation now because we have interest rates pegged to zero, and the central bank is doing things they've never done before. Everything 
now is unprecedented. So we don't have, uh, we have charts we can compare to from the past, but we don't have economic models that we can use from the past because what's happening now has never happened before. So we have the stock market moving up in tandem with the currency, which is incredibly beneficial to the residents of the country, not so great for foreigners. But my concern is when this entire thing goes into reverse. Now I want to show you a chart here that will show you that it's it's not unthinkable that this thing could go in reverse. This is the US dollar index from the MCI, uh, the, for some reason I'm stuck here, hold on a second, from MRCI, and I did a uh, paint snapshot of it so that I could draw the trend line in. So barring the rally that we had, and I don't have the years on here, unfortunately, but barring the rally that we had, that which penetrated this line, you can see back from the 1985, uh, that was the big currency realignment in 1985, uh, the dollar has really been on a downtrend, and you can see it's just touching up against the um, resistance that we have. So it's quite possible the dollar could actually stay in a bear market. Now you can see the dollar move from 125 all the way down to a low of 78. That's a huge depreciation in the value of a currency. And uh, that happened to coincide with the 87 stock market crash. So if we do get a resumption of this bear market in the dollar, a turn down and also a turn down in the stock market, the same thing that we've seen that's positive on the upside would be doubly negative on the downside. We'd have a currency that's moving down and a stock market that's moving down. And that's a, a really bad scenario. So let's look at this election here. I want to talk about what's going on and it's really, really strange. I'm gonna talk about some potential scenarios of what I think might be happening it's hard to say because this is such this, this is the strangest, most bizarre election that we've ever seen. Now, this is a video covering the recent speech by Hillary in, I think it was Tampa. And we, we know that, uh, well, we're going to talk about the press and the bias and everything else. But some of the bizarre things that are happening with Hillary are, uh, we know that Barack Obama was a definite outlier the presidents that we had beforehand, uh, Clinton was kind of an exception because he was an unknown, but most of the other presidents have kind of been fairly well-known, fairly well-established families, fairly well-established histories, and whereas Barack Obama is just this ghost that comes out of nowhere. We know all the rumors about fake social security numbers, fake birth certificates. We don't even know where he's from. We don't really even know who he is. He's never released any of his college transcripts. He's never released any of the papers he's written. He's a ghost. And I suspect it's probably the CIA that's behind all that. Now, what we're seeing with Hillary Clinton is some really, really strange stuff. Stuff that is like from out of an episode of Star Trek. So I'm going to play you this video here, which is Hillary, which I think is a fairly convincing case that she's actually speaking in front of a green screen and uh, you know we've already had the stories about Hillary's health we've had the stories about uh, Hillary doubles I I don't know whether those are true we have stories about Hillary with earpieces and implants and just weird and bizarre stuff but this video is fairly convincing I've watched other videos on this and this is just breaking now uh, I believe I saw a story the other yesterday uh, about Tim Kaine speaking in Florida, getting a crowd of 30, where Trump is pulling crowds in the 10s, 20s, and 30,000s. But this is a video posted today about where they're talking about Hillary being in front of a green screen. I'll let you decide. So let's play this video. Okay, there, I wanted to show everybody this. This looks really weird. I think Hillary Clinton used a green screen. Watch a belt right here on the guy's head there's going to be a reflection which usually happens with a green screen you know i tried as much as i could to talk about all the issues that are on your minds that i believe we can work together to improve and 
In fact, my wonderful running mate and I, Senator Tim Kaine, wrote a book called Stronger Together. And it actually disappears after a while. <laughs> See, and now it's gone. And here we go. Right? I do want to get the economy working for She looks like she's on a green screen. She looks like she did when she was in that commercial why am I not fifty thousand points ahead or whatever the fuck she said. So let's take a look at the recent Trump rally. And I want you to concentrate on what he says at the very beginning of this. He's actually calling out Fox News, but they're all against him. Fox say there are very few people here. Do you believe these people? Oh. They'll do anything, every one of them, every one of them. I'll tell you what, the media, folks, is no good. They're no good. Very dishonest. In 14 days, we're going to win the state of Florida. We're going to win back the White House. We are going to win Florida. And by the way, the lines at the voting booths are record. And I noticed that a lot of the people on lines, you see the pictures? They're wearing the red hat, the white hat, this hat. They're wearing all, they're wearing buttons all over the place. I think those are people that are inclined to vote for us. Do you agree? So this was supposed to be a rally in that hangar. And after the first hour, they realized that wasn't going to work too well. That's fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Look at that. We're going to have a big victory. The lines are record setting, which I knew they'd be. And a lot of people are being very surprised. It's very, very surprising. We're getting a big vote. So it's going to be a little early to tell you what those numbers are. But it's a big, big vote in the state of Florida. We're leading Iowa. We're leading Ohio. We're doing great in North Carolina. Pennsylvania, we're going to a lot. I think we're going to do great there. They put the miners out of work. We're putting the miners back to work. I think we're going to do great there. So you can watch the rest of that. Of the uh, definitely appears to be a real video. Kind of interesting. You can see the black people. You've got one, two, three black people here with shirts about Trump not being a racist. The stuff that the left is bringing out and you know i'm i'm not going to defend the republicans because the republicans in in my mind are are just as guilty as the democrats in torpedoing the future of this country but the left wing and the tactics that they use are beyond despicable i mean the blocking the stuff that's come out about hillary trying to foment violence at Trump rallies. Uh, it's really despicable, the stuff that the left does. Now, I'm not saying that I disagree with everything on the left, because I don't. I, I do agree with the left, or at least the previous left that doesn't really exist anymore, that supposedly elected Barack Obama, that believes in the U.S. not being the military police of the world. I agree with that. I agree with the opposition to the warmongering. But we can see Elizabeth Warren coming out now and openly endorsing Hillary. Elizabeth Warren, who talks about the corruption on Wall Street, uh, endorsing Hillary Clinton, who WikiLeaks has given us a transcript of her secret speech to Goldman Sachs, who's clearly in bed with the bankers, the globalists. Uh, I just saw a video today on uh, Godlike Productions about how Google is rigging their searches against Trump. Facebook's Zuckerberg is clearly opposing Trump. So there's a huge number of people who are opposing Trump. In fact, Trump has overcome opposition from every single quarter, including his own party, the, all of the media, and supposedly the conservative media, which really doesn't even exist except for the alternative media, but Fox 
which pretty much opposed him. Uh, the Republican Party, which has opposed him. Paul Ryan, the Speaker of the House, who is was treated as a conservative. Now it turns out he's not a conservative at all. And so it seems to be one giant party of, of big government socialism. And I don't know if Donald, Donald Trump is really going to take that down or not. So I want to go over some potential... Uh, possibilities of what this could mean. Jennifer and I were discussing this. We discussed this a lot. Not that uh, we put a lot of stock in politics, but uh, what's really going on? Because that's the hardest thing to figure out. What's really going on? Are we just watching a big TV show? Or is there really a true struggle going on? So let's look at some of the scenarios here. I gave a couple scenarios here, one where Trump wins and another one where Clinton wins. I'm going to say that the first one is the one that I think is probably the most likely, that uh, Trump is probably a part of the system and in the way that Paul Ryan, John Boehner, and all the fake, uh, the term rhino, Republicans in name only because Republicans are supposed to represent fiscal conservatism and uh, strong borders and things like that, which they really don't represent. Uh, so the first guess, and I think probably the most likely one, is that Trump probably works for them and that what's going to happen is that Trump is going to win against all odds. He's going to overcome all of the opposition, which will be universal opposition from the media, from the other party, from his own party, from foreign governments, from the Pope, from everyone you can possibly name. He's going to win, and the result is going to be a collapse. And uh, we know from various things we've studied, Bix Weir and others have pointed out that they have the ability to collapse the system at any moment. They've been preparing for the collapse of the system. We've seen various stories of banks being provided with stockpiles against riots. We, we're seeing the uh, setting up of uh, the seizing of funds and accounts and safe deposit boxes, uh, bail-ins, etc. So I'm going to go with the most like, likely is going to be my prediction, which I've said for a long time, that Trump is going to win and that the purpose behind this is to collapse the system when he wins, pull the trigger, bring it down, and the blame is going to fall on conservatives and populists. And that will be an opportunity to usher in some type of world socialism, which is what they really want. Now, the next scenario is possible. I give it about a 10% chance, and that's that Trump is truly legitimate, that he is a American who is near the end of his life, and he's sick of the traitors who run our government. And I think it's kind of indicative that he has a phrase of make America great again, the implication being that the people who are in power have intentionally destroyed America. And that would, that would mean arrests. That would mean that people like Mark Zuckerberg and Eric Schmidt of Google and people who, in the, who are in the media who have colluded uh, may be prosecuted under RICO statutes, uh, possibly that Barack Obama will be arrested, possibly that Hillary Clinton will be arrested, and possibly that a large number of the House of Representatives and the Senate will be arrested and tried for treason. That's a possibility. That's what a lot of conservatives and patriots are hoping for. I think the chance of that is very, very low. Now, the third possibility with Trump winning, I'm thinking, will be not such a drastic situation as them triggering a collapse, but actually let him institute his policies, which will be protectionist from everything he said. I think he's going to be protectionist. He's going to try to bring back jobs. Now, if he tries to bring back jobs in the positive uh, von Mises type of way, which is by reducing the size of government, I've already covered in many videos what they need to do. And it's really simple. They just need to fire half of all government workers and the other half that are left, they need to cut their wages in half, take their pensions, move them into the social security system and 
reduce the cost of running the government in half so that we run a surplus and either default on our debt or pay it down one or the other. That scenario I'm going to give maybe a 30% chance of happening. So I guess if you add them all together, I'm going to say there is a 60-70% uh, chance of uh, them collapsing the system on a Trump win, uh, 5 to 10% chance of Trump being straight legit and arresting his adversaries, and then maybe a 20-30% chance of Trump instituting his policies and there being a trade war. Now, with Clinton winning, I think that we really only have two scenarios. One is going to be hyperinflation, where we have a Federal Reserve that just simply opens up the printing presses to give everybody on the left everything they want. Uh, we're probably going to see higher taxes, which is going to be more people dropping out of the system, which means that the Federal Reserve is going to have to pay down more of our, uh, uh, pay for more of our government by printing money, which is already uh, an unbelievable number, or over a trillion dollars a year that they're just printing. Uh, I've documented this many times. And uh, the other one is uh, then things just kind of running the way they are, but a complete moral collapse because we're going to see the rise of the social justice warrior left uh, to a point of absolute oppression because these people, you can see with them blocking roads and their protests, uh, people on the left, you have to remember, they don't believe that they're is a moral standard. It It's difficult to expect a person who tells you that there is no God and that the end justifies the means, that it's hard to believe they wouldn't act in concordance with those views. And that's exactly what we see out of the left. Anything goes. The end justifies the means. Any kind of dirty, evil, wicked things. I'm not saying that the right is not guilty of that. I don't think any truly legitimate Christian conservatives would advocate that, but much of what we have on the right, including Milo Yiannopoulos on Breitbart having gay men advocate uh, men's rights and conservatism, um, these people can't be trusted, the gay invasion of the Republican Party, most of the Republicans, uh, these aren't real moral conservatives. So. Uh, that scenario would be moral collapse. I'm going to give probably uh, a 50-50 chance of either one of those. So what do I think the chances are of Trump winning? I think Trump's going to win. I will give an 80% chance that Trump's going to win and a 20% chance that Clinton is going to win. And uh, again, a very high chance that we're going to see a collapse coinciding with Trump's win. So back to the main chart here uh, the dollar with the stock market going up when these things reverse and they're going to reverse I believe that when they reverse as we had in 1987 or when we had at the dot-com collapse that we're going to see a catastrophic collapse where we have the value of the currency dropping remember the dollar is going to be the last man standing. A lot of people have predicted that it will be the last man standing. It seems to be the last man standing. The British pound is collapsing. We've seen other currencies around the world collapse in the face of gold. When the dollar collapses in the face of gold, then we're probably going to get that scenario. And we'll talk to you next time.